So hello fellow Irish coin collectors, and in today's video we're looking at the Irish coinage of pre-decimal currency. So I have done a few videos on Irish coins. Uh, the last pre-decimal one I've done was three years ago, so that's quite a long time ago. I have sold most of those coins and I've got more coins, which we show here. In this video we're going to talk about the coins that you should be looking for that are low mint coins. So, the smallest denomination I had in the pre-decimal series is this farthing. So, it's got quarter D. So that's the exchange value. There's our farthing. And the bird on it is a woodcock. So, this one looks like it has differential patina. It's probably an artifact of the way it's kept. And it was minted in 1949. And 1949 had a mintage of... Sorry, I wrote it down. Uh, 192,000. So half the mintages of this coin series have 192,000. And that mintage is not large enough for the economic market. So indicating that these coins were not very popular in circulation. And the highest mintage for this coin was around about 700,000 in 1939. Compared to a penny... So the first penny had a mintage of 9 million, uh, but this one is 1931, and 1931 had a mintage of quite a few million, I haven't written it down, so obviously about, probably about 4 or 5 million, you can find the information on Numister. And you can see, this one has Ida, so Iron and Irish, and this one has Free State of Ireland. So I don't speak Irish, so I can't pronounce it. I'll butcher it. So these coins here are worth about five to ten dollars, depending on the condition. Uh, but I I buy all these coins pretty much close to a dollar each, or even two dollars for some. So that's what you need to look for. But when I purchase these ones, these ones are a bullion value, and then you include these ones, so it reduces the value of these coins that you. I'm for so half pennies always in high grade and the lowest minted farthing was this 1966 one with only 96,000 so this is a set so this is a 1966 uncirculated coin set obviously the coins do fall out so you need to be careful and these come from the UK so I have a similar type of set from Rhodesia and they have Rhodesia on the front and this one has coins of Ireland. So these sets are probably like 20 or 30 dollars each. Uh, the mintage of these coins varies. Most of these are common coins except for the half penny which is the lowest minted half, uh, not half penny, farthing that Ireland did produce. Then we have Half pennies. So these ones have a, a pig, a sow with uh, her, her offspring. So 1928 being the first year of mintage is a high mint. Then we have, so this one is 1935. It's one of the lowest coins with uh, 960,000. 1933 has 720, so that's the key date. Uh, but obviously this one is in probably fine condition because a lot of the detail of the coin has disappeared. So that's what you need to look for, a high grade one. So this one here, let's zoom in. That's probably extremely fine for a 1928. So you're probably talking about $5. This one also probably $5, even though the grade is poor and has been damaged. Then we have a... 1941, so if I don't say the mintages, then the mintages are okay, so this is probably very fine condition, probably a few dollars, one or two dollars. Then we have a 43, 42 and 43 are pretty high mintages, and a 53, so this one is in almost uncirculated grade. And it does have some scratches and all that, but it has does have the mint luster and also some stuff on it so i need to look into that 
that's probably only a few dollars as well. This one is bronze disease, so it's a pity. And maybe I shouldn't put those two coins together. But anyway, I'll fix that up later. Then we have the penny. So I do have a high grade penny from 1928. So this is uncirculated or almost uncirculated. It does have a mint luster on it. So mint luster means that you can see the metal underneath. 1928. So this one's probably about five to ten dollars. So not I've never seen one in that condition. Then we have one, this is probably VF, very fine. 31. It's a 1931, it's a few million. Then we have so this one has a dark streak in it, so that's where it's preserved. 1935. So that one is a few million, but this one's in high grade. So that will be a few dollars. So I don't know the value of all of these coins. That's what I need to investigate. So most of these I'll probably resell. And uh, the animal on this is just a, a hen with her chicks. So most of these are domestic animals. 1937. Yeah, also a few million. So this is... So the 1937 was the last year in which they would put Free State of Ireland and in 19, starting 1938 they just put Ireland. And this one is the 1940, so this is the low mint coin, the lowest of the pennies, 312,000. And probably in this condition, probably worth, uh, I don't know, probably about $10. So that's a nice coin. The actual coin I put in very fine. Uh, it has a lot of damage on the rim, which does detract from the coin. But on this side, it looks like extremely fine with the actual design. And after 1940, the coins have come common. So 1942 is minted to about 12 moons. So very common. But you can see this one has a little bit of a weakness in the middle. And here's another 942. Yeah, this one's not really the best condition. And the last one I have is 48. So 48 also has a few million. So probably only about a few dollars for those each, except for the 1940. Then we have the fruitpence. So we've got fruitpence. Then we have shillings. So the difference between Australia you know, and Fiji. Uh, whatever countries, New Zealand, the UK, was that the fruitpence and sixpence were never issued in silver. So up until 1940, they were in nickel. And then in 1942, I don't believe there's any 41 coins. No, nah, they started issuing copper and nickel. And the silver ones up until 1940s, so 42, 43, were silver and then they didn't mint coins until about 1951, in which uh, they changed over to copper and nickel, just like every other country. Uh, but, you know, that's because of the Second World War, even though Ireland was not part of any conflict in that war. So this one has a hare, a rabbit, a solitary animal. So 28 is the most common, I think about one and a half million. Still not a high mintage coin. Then we have... 35, so 1935 at a mintage of 240,000. This is a common thing you'll find with these coins up until the 50s. Is that there? Uh, pretty low mint. So that's a nice coin myself. And these two are nickel. Then we have a 46. So 46 has a, I think, a mintage of 600,000, so quite low. There's, okay. 65, 3 or 4 million. So these are copper and nickel coins. And it has a Irish harp. I forgot to say that. The Irish harp, which is the Gaelic harp. Claire Sir, Whatever, however you say it. And this one's in high grade. So this coin probably is only worth, with, in this condition, probably about 5 to $10. And the other ones uh, will be less value. So this one in pretty poor condition. Uh, probably 
probably two or three dollars. Anyway, sell that with a coin lot. And they're nice. Got no reading and they're thick. And then we have the sixpence coin. So this one has the Irish Wolfhound. So 28, yeah, be most common, but you know this coin is probably VF to EF condition. I'd say probably EF for that. It has light wear on the top. Oh, but nice coin. And 34. So 34 is a mintage of 600,000, which is pretty low for this coin. Uh, the 1945 is a mintage of 400,000, which is what you want to look for. Uh, but this one is probably in you know, VF condition. Of course, it's a low, lower mint coin, probably 5 to $10. So you can see a different theme. A lot of these coins are only worth 5 or $10. As you get into the 50s and 60s, the, the values decrease because a lot more coins produce. You have an iron 39, still in nickel. And so if you think about a million for that coin. Then we have, I think I've got two 1940s. Let's turn it over. Yeah, yeah 1940s. So this one's probably VF conditions, probably EF. And that has a few million minted, so not really anything to write home about. 1945. So this is a copper nickel coin. So the difference between nickel and copper nickel is that nickel is usually magnetic. And this one is uh, 1942. So 45. This one is a mintage of 400,000. So this is the key that you're looking for. But as you can see, conditions, probably VF. And this one is probably a higher grade VF. Uh, but still... Nice coins to get, and quite a few. So those will be going on my eBay. And then we have some silver one shillings. I believe these are only 75% silver, so not the 92.5, or at the time of UK it was 50% silver, so... I people probably would have attempted to smuggle these out of Ireland because they had the same value as the UK coins but more silver. So that would have been a problem with these coins. So they probably would have tried to not allow people to do that. So 28, this is probably in fine condition. A lot of that image is gone. Then we have 33, so this only has 300,000. So this is more like a key date you're looking for. Uh, silver is about three dollars thirty six, so it's in fine condition. And here we have another one from nineteen thirty nine, but this has one point one four million. And it's in better grade, so probably VF condition, because it does have a lot of wear on the harp as well. And nineteen sixty eight, so this is the last year. Uh, mintage of four million, and these would have circulated with the five pence so as they didn't produce a lot of five pence coins pretty much similar mintage as that these probably just continued to circulate up until these both were removed in 1993 or 94 somewhere around that date they reduced it to a smaller coin so here we have a 94 smaller five pence coin and demonetize, so you can't exchange these anymore. So 68, 69, so they wanted to keep these in circulation with each other. And then we have the florins. So as a bullion value of about $8.70. And this one's probably in very good defined condition. And then we have 28 and 33. So 33 has a few, I didn't write the mintage down, uh, but the lowest mint coins uh, you probably want to get is 934, 1937 with uh, 150,000 each. So, nice coin, and then we have some of the copper nickel coins, 55 and 59. Now, these are pretty common, uh, but the condition is probably EF, so high grade coins. Uh, and but I purchased these lots for these ones 
So the two and sixpence in silver. These are a lower mint coins. And it has a wound value of about ten dollars. So this one's in higher grade. VF, this is probably fine. It's a very good. I'd say very good. Because it has a lot of wear. You can't see the horse's eyes or anything like that. And also the lettering starting to disappear. And this one is nine thirty one, so that's hundred and sixty thousand, quite a low mint for a coin. But the 1940, 37 is what you want in far 40,000. So it'll be hard to get. And this one, 1940 is mini job 720. Sorry, I mean 752,000. That's a high grade coin. So you're probably talking about 20 to $30 of that. Even though it's got some damage there. Someone probably used pliers or something on it. And then we have the copper nickel so these also have less than a million and they're just quite a nice coin so I will probably bundle all these into lots a whole lot of coins together so the only coin I'm waiting for is the 10 shillings I'm not too sure when I'll get that it's probably like 40 or 50 dollars but I did get some high grade coins so here's a one shilling in uncirculated condition and here we have some florins and that one is 51 and 54 so also in uncirculated condition these ones probably worth about five dollars in that condition together anyway that is the state of the irish three decimal coins so if you've got any of these uh i suggest you look on ebay and see how much they sell for because as you can see get lots of different coins and you get silver and you can also get high grade coins anyway i'll leave this video here thank you very much for watching i'll leave a link down below to ebay and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time thank you and goodbye